Hello and welcome to our video for section 10 of DMA 10 where we'll discuss square roots. In this section we're going to cover the definition of a square root and do some practice problems. I'll introduce you to the square, square root chart. Um, we'll talk about finding square roots of very large numbers and then talk about how square roots fit into the order of operations. Let's start with the definition of a square root. A number is a square root of another number if the square of the first number equals the second. Um, so let's look at this example down here. Um, we use this thing called the radical symbol to denote a square root. Okay, so for example, the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 squared equals 25. So we're trying to find the number inside the radical that when we square it will give us this. Okay, and 5 indeed is that number because when we square 5, 5 times 5 will give us 25 back. Also notice that um, the square root of negative 25 could be negative 5 because if we square negative 5, which looks like negative 5 times negative 5, we also get a, 20, a positive 25. So um, positive numbers can have both a positive and a negative square root. For the most part in this class, we're just going to be focusing on the positive square roots, but do know that the negative square roots do exist. Let's practice finding some square roots. Uh, here we're just going to find the, the positive square root only. So this first example, the square root of 4, we need to find the number that when we square it, we're going to get 4 back. And that number is going to be 2, because 2 squared, or 2 times 2, equals 4. Good. Next, the square root of 9. What number do we need to square to get 9? Well, that number is going to be 3, because 3 squared or 3 times itself is 9. Now notice that when I'm taking the square roots here, when I take the square root, I get rid of that radical symbol. So that radical symbol goes away once the square root is taken. All right, let's move on to our next example, the square root of 100. What number times itself will give me 100? That's going to be 10, because 10 squared or 10 times 10 equals 100. Great. Next, 144. The square root of 144, that's a bigger number, but we can still find its square root. That's 12. Because 12 squared, or 12 times 12, equals 144. Okay. Uh, back to some smaller cases. What about the square root of 1? What number times itself will give us 1? Well, there's really there's only one option for that. It's going to be the number 1. Okay? Because 1 squared is going to be 1 times 1, which also gives us 1. So the square root of 1 is itself. The same for 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Because 0 squared, or 0 times 0, is 0. So that's some practice with finding square roots. Here's a copy of a square root chart that you may have already been given in class. If you haven't been given this, um, either ask your instructor or check in your Blackboard course site and find a copy of the square root chart. Now this is something that you'll be allowed to use in the DMA 10 quizzes that cover square roots and your final exam, so you don't have to have all these memorized. Um, so we can find the square roots of um, a whole bunch of numbers. Um, these are all the perfect squares, everything that has a perfect square root, between uh, 0 and 625, or the perfect squares of numbers 0 through 25. Okay, Not every number is going to have a square root, right? Like 5. Um, there's nothing here for 5 because there's no um, whole number that when we times it by itself that gives us 5 back. So only certain numbers are going to have perfect square roots, and that's what we're concerned in in this class, is numbers that are perfect squares. Okay. So um, this is chart works two ways. If we need to find the square root of a number, we find it on the left. Say we need the square root of 121. Um, we follow it to the right, and its square root is 11. We can also square numbers by going in the opposite direction. Say we needed to find 22 squared. 
Well, we find 22 on the right, and then when we square it, we get 484. So this chart's very useful, and keep in mind that you don't have to have these memorized. Um, it'll be given to you as it stands now on your final exam. Sometimes we may be asked to find the square root of a large number that's not contained on our chart, like in this case here. We need to find the square root of 1,296. Now, remember on the chart, I think the largest number that was on there was uh, 625, whose square root was 25. So we, need, we know that uh, it's going to be a number much bigger than that. There are several different ways to attack a problem like this, but for this class, uh, I recommend just a guess and check method. Um, we know it's got to be 20, bigger than 25, right? Because that's where our chart ends. Uh, that was the last number listed with this perfect square. So um, let's try some easy numbers until we get in the range of 1296. Uh, the first number that I might start with would be 30 times 30, because um, it's easy to multiply uh, numbers, um, powers of 10, by themselves, if we remember that trick from earlier videos. So I'm going to do 30 times 30. This 0 comes straight down. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 3 is 900. Okay, not quite big enough, so maybe I'll try the next power of 10. 40 times 40. Uh, we bring this first 0 straight down, our placeholder. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 4 is 16. So we get 1,600. All right, so now we know um, that it's somewhere between 30 and 40. 30 was too small, 40 was too big. Now let's start thinking really critical and remember what we know about our multiplication tables. This is an even number because it ends in a 6, right? So the, there's only um, two ways to get evens. An even would be an even times an even number. And, or an even times an odd number. Because odd times odd will give us an odd number. Okay, so remember those facts. So um, since we know that even, we can't have an even odd combination, right? Because the number has to be the same when we square it. Um, so that means if we're taking the square root of an even number, like we are here, then its square root has to be even. If we're taking the square root of an odd number, then the square root has to be odd. So um, we need to just try even numbers between 30 and 40. Um, I might try 32, see if that's big enough. 32 times 32. Not quite big enough, maybe 34. Getting closer, but still not big enough yet. What's our next even number, 36? What do you know? We get the number that we were looking for. So that means the square root of 1296 is going to be 36. Now it took a little bit of guessing and checking, but by, you know, thinking smart, by working smart instead of working hard and doing a little bit of critical thinking, we're able to find that square root pretty easily. Now let's talk about where square roots fall in the order of operations. Square roots are going to fall under the exponent step in the order of operations. So let's recall what the order of operations are. Parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide from left to right, and then add and subtract from left to right. Okay, so right here, uh, under the exponent step, is where um, our square root function or square root operation is going to occur. So let's look at this sample problem. We've got a little bit of everything in here. Um, remember, order of 
order of operations say we need to do parentheses first. So we have two sets. We've got these brackets, and then we've got these innermost inside parentheses here. Okay, we start on the innermost parentheses, so the first thing that we're going to do is the 4 minus 1, which is 3. Since that's just a number now, I can drop the parentheses and then copy everything else down. Okay, so I'm still going to be working inside the brackets here. Okay, uh, what's, what operations do I have in here? I have an exponent here. I have subtraction here. I have implied multiplication here. This is the first time we've seen this. We've got a number outside of a square root. So that's another form of implied multiplication. So we can draw a little time sign in there. And we've got another square root or an exponent. So um, the next thing that we'll be doing inside the, these brackets are our exponents. So that's going to be the 3 squared and the square root of 36. So let's do those now. 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9, okay, minus 3 times the square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times 6 will give us 36. And then let's copy everything down that we haven't used. We've got a 3 times that, and a 12. Still working inside the brackets. Um, we're going to have to multiply before we can subtract. So negative 3 times a positive 6 is going to give us a positive, or a plus 18 and then copying down everything else. Or, excuse me, a negative times a positive gives us a negative or minus 18. Okay, and now I can continue to copy everything else down. Now let's subtract and we'll finish off these brackets. Positive 9 minus 18, the signs are different so we subtract the 2 and keep the sign of the larger number. The, um, the larger number is the negative, we subtract 18 minus 9 and get 9, so we're going to get a negative 9. I'm going to keep that in parentheses because it's times a 3, and then still plus that 12. Working down the list, next thing we do is times. Positive 3 times a negative 9. I'm going to get it right, right this time. A positive times a negative is going to be a negative, and then 3 times 9 is going to be 27. And then carry down that 12. So the last thing to do is the 12 minus the 27 different signs. We have a positive and a negative, so when we sub we'll subtract them to get 15. Okay. And since the larger these two is negative, the sign is going to be negative. Okay, so that was a great review of order of operations and how a square, the square root step fits in to those type of problems. So to review, that covers everything in section 10. We discussed the definition of a square root and did some practice with some small numbers. We talked about how to use the square root chart. Uh, we found a square root of a very large number. And then we talked about how square roots worked into the order of operations. So good luck on your work with section 10. And tune in next time for our last section of DMA 10, section 11, where we'll talk about the Pythagorean theorem.